Hello, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me for the story, The Five Chinese Brothers, by Claire Huckett Bishop and Kurt Weiss. This is a favorite book of mine since I was a little kid. And look, there's five brothers there. And in my family, there's four brothers. And here's a picture of us. Not really, but <laughs> it's like us. Uh, I'm the smiley one up here. Smiley. All right. So let's look at The Five Chinese Brothers. One of my favorites. I hope it is one of yours. The Five Chinese Brothers. Once upon a time, there were five Chinese brothers and they all looked exactly alike. Hmm. I think that's cost their quintuplets. That's five. They lived with their mother in a lo little house not far from the sea. Look, here they are. Let's count them together. One, oh, there they are. One, two, three, four, five. The first Chinese brother could swallow the sea. The second Chinese brother had an iron neck. Ding, ding, ding. The third Chinese brother could stretch and stretch his legs. Oh, legs, legs. <laughs> the fourth Chinese brother could not be burned. Ooh. The fifth Chinese brother could hold his breath indefinitely. Hold your breath. Oh. Ah, I can't hold it very long. Here we go. Every morning, the first Chinese brother would go fishing. And whatever the weather, he would come back to the village with beautiful and rare fish, which he had caught and would sell at the market for a very good price. One day, as he was leaving the marketplace, a little boy stopped him and asked him if he could go fishing with him. No, it cannot be done, said the first Chinese brother. But the little boy begged and begged, and finally the little Chinese brother consented. Under one condition, said he, and that is that you should obey me promptly. That means when I ask you to do something, you gotta listen real quick. Yes, yes, the little boy promised. Uh-oh, let's see if the little boy does it. There's the first Chinese brother going fishing. He caught a fish. You like fishing? I like eating fish. Early next morning, the first Chinese brother and the little boy went down to the beach. Remember, said the first Chinese brother, you must obey me promptly. When I make a sign for you to come back, you must come at once. Yes, yes, the little boy promised. Uh, let's see if the little boy does what he said he's going to do. Then the first Chinese brother swallowed the sea. Oh, there he is, drinking up the water. Gulp, 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 gulp. He's drinking the whole sea. And all the fish were left high and dry at the bottom of the sea. And all the treasures of the sea lay uncovered. The little boy was delighted. He ran here and there, stuffing his pockets with strange pebbles, extraordinary shells, and fantastic algae. Ooh. There's the first Chinese brother. He swallowed the sea, and the little boy's running out there. He's running out there, picking up all the pretty things. That'd be pretty cool to see, right? That'd be pretty neat. Near the shore, the first Chinese brother gathered some fish while he kept holding the sea in his mouth. Presently, he grew tired. It is very hard to hold the sea. So he made a sign with his hand for the little boy to come back. Come back, little boy. Come back. He couldn't use his mouth. He went, <laughs> Try it with me. Make believe, though, your mouth is full of water and you're motioning for a little boy to come back. <laughs> The little boy saw him, but paid no attention. Uh-oh. There he is. Starting to get tired. I, I, I've tried to hold water in my mouth for a little while, and it, it hurts your cheeks after a while. Oh, there are the, the first Chinese brother. <laughs> the first Chinese brother made great movements with his arms, and that meant, come back. But the, did the little boy care? Not a bit. He ran further and further away. Where'd the sea supposed to go? Then the first Chinese brother 
felt the sea swelling inside him, and he made desperate gestures to, to call the little boy back. But the little boy made faces at him and fled as fast as he could. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, something's going to happen. The first Chinese brother held the sea until he thought he was going to burst. All of a sudden, the sea forced its way out of his mouth, went back into the seabed, and the little boy disappeared. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, the little boy. Uh-oh, didn't listen. Didn't do what he promised. Mm -mm -mm. When the first Chinese brother returned to the village alone, he was arrested, put in prison, tried and condemned to have his head cut off. Uh-oh. On, on the morning of the execution, he said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. So the first Chinese brother went home, and the second Chinese brother came back in his place. There he is, asking the judge if he can go and see his mom before he was uh, punished. And he went... And his brother came back, the second one. So the first went home, the second came back. Here we go. First went home, whoop, second came back, whoop. <laughs> All the people were, were assembled on the village square to witness the execution. The executioner took his sword and struck a mighty blow. Uh, he hit the guy in the neck, the second brother. What happened? What happened? Oh, 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 I almost, oh, yeah. All the people are there watching. Let's see what happens. But the second Chinese brother got up and smiled. He was the one with the iron neck. Ding, ding, ding. And they simply could not cut his head off. <laughs> Ouch. Everybody was angry and they decided that he should be drowned. They were like, oh no. Why didn't that work? I don't know. Well, they decided next day they're gonna try to throw him in the water. So let's see what happens. On the morning of the execution, the second Chinese brother said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. So the second Chinese brother went home, and the third Chinese brother came back in his place. So the second Chinese brother went home, but the third one came back. Oh, number three. He was pushed on a boat which made for the open sea. Oh, there he is, asking the judge, could I go home and see my mother? But of course. When they were far out on the ocean, the third Chinese brother was thrown over overboard. Oh no! Does he look worried? Does he look scared? Hmm, not too much. But he began to stretch and stretch and stretch his legs way down to the bottom of the sea. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that Chinese brother, the third one, stretched his legs. <laughs> That's a good trick. And all the time, his smiling face was bobbing up and down at the top of the waves. He simply could not be drowned. Everybody was angry. And they all decided that he should be burned the next day. On the morning of the execution, the third Chinese brother said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. So the third Chinese brother went home. And who came back? But number four. The fourth Chinese brother came back in his place. There he is, his face smiling, his legs at the bottom of the ocean. <gasps> Fourth came back. Let's see what happened. Number four, fourth Chinese brother, was tied up to a stake, a, a big piece of wood. Fire was set to it, and all the people stood around watching it. In the middle of the flames, they heard him say, This is quite pleasant. Bring some more wood, the people cried. The fire roared higher. Oh, now it is quite comfortable, said the fourth Chinese brother for he was the one who could not be burned. Everybody was getting more and more angry every minute, and they all decided to smother him. Oh, no. There he is. He's like, oh, 
This is nice. I like this. Not so bad. <laughs> oh, man. These Chinese brothers are amazing. So, on the morning of the execution, the fourth Chinese brother said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go and bid my mother goodbye? <laughs> you think the judge would learn something after a while, but not so much. I guess not. It is only fair, said the judge. So the fourth Chinese brother went home, and who came home? Who came back? The fifth Chinese brother came back in his place. Oh, a large brick oven had been built on the village square, and it had been it had been all stuffed with whipped cream. <laughs> whipped cream. The fifth Chinese brother was shoved into the oven right in the middle of the cream. The door was shut tight, and everybody sat around and waited. So there they are. They threw the fifth Chinese brother in an oven full of whipped cream. <laughs> this is a great story. I like this. I like whipped cream. Delicious. Well, what's going to happen to the fifth Chinese brother? What's going to happen? They were not going to be tricked again. So they stayed there all night and even a little after the sun came up just to make sure that he didn't get away. Oh, they're all watching. They're all like, oh, what's going to happen? Oh, he has to pay for what happened to that little boy. Oh, let's see what happens. Then they opened the door and pulled him out. And he shook himself and said, my, that was a good sleep. Everybody stared open mouth. Stare with, stare, big eyes. <gasps> with your mouth open. <gasps> <laughs> but the judge stepped forward and said we have tried to get rid of you in every possible way and somehow it cannot be done it must be that you are innocent you're not guilty it was it's not your fault that the little boy got hurt yes yes shouted the people so they all let him go and he went home there he is Jumping out of the oven, stuffed with whipped cream. <laughs> oh, man. That would be, that'd be delicious. I'd love a whole bunch of whipped cream. Wow. And the five Chinese brothers and their mother all lived together happily for many years. There they are. All five of the Chinese brothers with their amazing skills. With their mommy. <laughs> Thank you so much for reading this story with me, The Five Chinese Brothers. I am so happy you were with me. Thank you for joining Dan the Story Man. And until next time, toodaloo, ta-ta, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.